Good morning, traders. Welcome to the Traders Lab. I'm Tom B. Streaming live Monday through Friday, 11:30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And please remember, Monday is Labor Day holiday in the U.S. And we will not be streaming. The purpose of the stream is to help you understand market behavior. In other words, market mechanics. Why does the market do what it does? How does the market do what it does? There is order in what appears to be randomness. And if you understand how the market tends to work, uh, you might have a better opportunity to integrate a trade plan with it and potentially align indicators if you are so inclined. Uh, the key element in all of this is to know what the condition of the market is and the thing about the condition of the market is it changes inner day uh, as well as in higher time frames. So the goal is if we can look at the pieces in multiple time frames we may be able to use more microstructures or time frames in order to align with higher time frames and that potentially can give you the range uh, that may fit your risk reward parameters. Understanding the different contexts can help you align and adjust and on the other side of that also know when it might bu might not be in alignment with your current trading approach. So the program is about integrating auction market theory. In the words, in the theory of the auction is the purpose of the market, how it behaves. Volume profile is a physical, optical representation of this behavior and it's really price and volume versus price alone uh, or price based oscillators moving average and things of this nature which are all derivative of price this is price plus volume and where there is volume tells us something and when there is not volume at price that also gives us other input and that's the basis of the auction and we'll be looking at that and then the whole thing is about how do you layer these tools or this insight or potential behavior together uh, into a potential either uh, trade plan or just really the purpose of the stream is to give you understanding of how this works and then potentially for you to build something on top of it. That is the purpose of this stream. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice or recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo, paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results and please remember this is not a trade calling room. If you're looking for trade calling then this is not the place to be. This is for education. Now we will look back at what has transpired today and what is developing and we will also come into real time uh, but none of these are to be co uh, considered uh, recommendations to interact with the market. This is more for you to learn how the market works and then potentially with a better understanding of market mechanics how the behavior manifests itself uh, potentially be able to get into alignment with the market or uh, create a trade plan uh, to take advantage of these things when they show up. Again, you have to vet your own trade plan, and I recommend that if you don't have a trade plan that you get one. I'm still having a little technical issues here, not uh, not on YouTube. By the way, if you want to post questions, you can post them in YouTube uh, chat, of course, and of course the Discord uh, Trader Lab chat. Um, and I will look at them, of course, and review them. It takes me some time. They're in multiple windows. Also, you guys in YouTube, uh, check the cog wheel. Make sure you're in 1080p. Also, there's a 15-second delay um, in YouTube. So I think we've covered that. Okay.
general understanding here. Auction market theory, I need to review this because there's always new folks and traders coming to the stream, so I want to make sure that we have this basis of understanding. Uh, auction market theory is very simple. Uh, it's uh, buy on sale. Don't buy when the price is too high. Retail is where we're most comfortable. You go to the store. Basically, there's a retail price. That's a dollar a can for tuna. Today, we're going to do tuna. Uh, it goes down to 75 cents if you're a tuna lover and you perceive it's below retail or a fair price and you would see that as advantageous as a buyer you, you might buy more that's called a sale the, that's the auction if there's demand down on that sale the sellers are going to see the demand and they're going to start raising their price back up maybe they'll bring it back up to retail and since retail is perceived by the seller and the buyer to be a fair price it's going to generate volume think about it in the supermarket there's a price if everybody thinks it's fair the sellers and the buyers that interaction creates high volume and that's your retail price okay logical right if the price goes up to a dollar and a quarter a can of tuna you may go you know uh, uh, this time I'll buy it but I'm only gonna buy one because I need that one can you know but I'm not gonna buy more than one then it goes up to a dollar thirty five and a dollar fifty you say I'm just not paying it I'm gonna go to a different product or a different store and then the sellers if they wanna get that volume and those transactions, they're going to have to start lowering the price to entice the buyer. And at some point, we get back to what is considered a retail price, and that's where the maximum volume transacts. That's retail. That's the auction. Now you got it. Now here's the other little element about this. This auction takes place all over the, uh, in the developing time frame, in all fractals or time frames. The process is generic. So it's not necessarily one big auction. It is, in some ways, in the developing time frame, but inside of that time frame, there's other auctions taking place as the market consolidates. And think of a auction as a consolidation, because that's really what it is. Two sides interact, right? And it, where in that little fractal is too high and too low, too high and too low. And then there's a retail price. And if that retail price is either too high or too low relative to the, where the rest of the volume is taking place, we're going to leave it. I think of those more micro fractals, and I want you to think of it this way, since we're using a grocery store or the supermarket as an example, as a convenience store. A convenience store also has pricing. It has a low price, it has a fair price, it has a high price. And it's going to be priced differently than a supermarket because it's, quote, convenient. However, there's still volume in that convenience store, even though it's less. But we can still see, using the volume profile, where a fair price is, where an unfair price is. And if we leave the retail price that means that store, the business is done in that convenience store, and we're going to potentially move to another area. So this takes place all through the day, all through uh, the daily developing time frame and in microstructure. So we're going to look at that. Time frame, simple. What's your time frame? What's your fractal? Are you trading a short-term time frame? Or you're using the short-term time frame to attempt to get in alignment with higher time frames so you can take advantage of the larger rotations uh, that's what you're going to see here today all right and then the context this is always the thing that gets traders uh, into trouble is because the market goes through phases it gets directional right which is one kind of behavior contextually and then it gets rotational where now it auctions back and forth, back and forth. And you need, in my opinion, and I'm going to say past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results, a different trade plan for different behaviors. Uh, because one size doesn't fit all in the market, otherwise the market would just do one thing. But it's not. And that's why many traders who are indicator-based don't understand that when the context changes, what might work in one context based on an indicator uh, is, is going to get you upside down because you'll just be selling or buying little rotations as opposed to getting aligned for higher uh, range moves. If you can't tell the difference in the context, you're going to have very inconsistent results, in my opinion. Now, Bookmap is the order flow tool. 
that I use uh, because I needed a way to figure out how to understand what was going on in the book. And uh, I found uh, at being a dome reader, just watching the bids and the offers moving around, I couldn't remember where anything was. I didn't, and it's just I can't remember it and do everything else. So Bookmap became a tool for me to watch and understand the behavior of the order book, to learn about what it might mean, how to use it at times when potentially there's alignment with other auction-based structure, and then it allows us to see stops, icebergs, stop sweeps, absorption. Many other tools um, are part of that. Uh, package and it's helped me get into the microstructure. So for me, uh, Bookmap allows me to see all of this in minutia, in micro. And for me, if I can cut down, and this is just my personal approach, if I can narrow the range of these microstructures, it gives me the opportunity for potentially better entries, better risk management, because I can execute better than I can with a higher time frame. Uh, regular chart, you know, so it's it it's helpful for that. But it also, you know, there's so much more to it. So, um, but we're going to look at all that, okay? But now I want to take you to the higher time frame, because we have to always, in my opinion, um, look at what's going on, because the higher time frame is where, in my opinion, we want to be aligning. So let's take a look at where we are, and this is as of the close yesterday. Now, if you remember, looking at this, these are what I call, uh, these are micro composites. And all these are, this is RTH candles, and they're consolidations, right? And if you think about how the auction works, remember, oh, it's on sale. I like it. I'm not paying that. Yeah, but this is still a great price down here. I'm not paying that. And this right here, this gold-ish color line is retail. So that means as we were crisscrossing this consolidation, this was where the highest volume transacted. Because we, of all of this, we spent the most time in the most transactions here. So too high, too low, retail. So look what happens. This retail price is too high. This is a previous retail price here. We break below it. That's saying, so up here, too high, break below, too high, come down right here, test this one practically to the tick, 41.22, too low, back up to check here, too high, missed it, didn't tag it, break below it, too high, watch the process. And this big outside day, nasty. Where are the stops under this consolidation? Here, fuel. You guys following me? Then what? Look at what happens here. Down day, where do we go? 39.69. That was yesterday's key number. Remember, it was our over-under. Because if we got below it, that put the next target. 3,900-ish, 3,907 right there is our next target. And if you happen to look, 3,907, 3,904-ish, remember horseshoes and hand grenades is the next target. Once we came under here yesterday, and this target, as you know, has been sitting here, and then we have another one below. So what is the low of the day? Uh, hmm. You guys can, 3,903 half. What was our next target? 39.05 quarter. I think that's pretty close. What do you guys think? No precision in trading, by the way. Are you guys tracking so far as far as the uh, higher time frame? Okay. This is the point of the auction. And you can see it here. Now, this is all going to happen in a day also in microstructures, the same thing. But I want to get aligned, for me, the higher time frame. So if I see this, which was a key retail price, remember, day before, yesterday, we checked it, boom, closed back inside. Yesterday, 
we were trading in balance if you guys remember it was two-sided trade and then when we the stream ended it was like there might be change you know watch this and then once we got below it and we had an unfinished auction yesterday the volume point of control closed at the low of the day which says uh, not so good uh, for the longs we gap lower then what we expect on a gap is what's called responsive buying in other words these guys these shorts open go lower let's take some profit that's what's responsive and then puts this back on track so that's where we are so the market is doing this is auction behavior now it doesn't mean that we're here that we're done we can react we might be done or we continue lower and come down to here not a trade recommendation because I have no idea but what you're seeing is retail check bounce break too high just like here too high too high this one too high broke away from it you know so does that make sense I want to make sure we're aligned here to understand auction why this is the mechanics of the market in my opinion and I have to say anything can happen in the market you know that that is trading right but if you can kind of get your brain wrapped around what the market tends to do what is the purpose of the market let's remember what the auction is find a buyer too low find a seller too high retail price we like it break away whoop too high let's go back and check what was uh, too low break under it uh oh warning will Robinson check it from below too high what's next this was too low that's too high now we break below it see you later alligator back here 69 bounce off it retail check too low check it up oh, break below it too high next on the hit parade 3900 that's it you got it any questions on this is it logical you know yeah other brother uh, is asking uh, are the higher time frame targets prior points of control yes they are VPOX in the higher time frame the auction is generic so it is doing the same process in all time frames um, now you guys in the trader lab you know we have a, a number of setups I don't like using the term but uh, that have uh, gone off this morning and uh, I would like to think that nobody was on the long side but again it's subject to your trade plan this is actually a trade right here but it's just already happened but uh, but let's go back if you want we can go take a look or if you like I can kind of stay in uh, real time I know you guys like that but let me show you I'm gonna show you um, this is the RTH open and I'll zip through this um, right here is the volume point of control remember retail right in the volume point of control all it is is where the high volume is remember retail too high too low right now we anticipate on a gap remember responsive buying write that down and you're gonna ask me why why profit taking if you were short and you know we have NFP tomorrow morning right you might think to yourself well let's take some off the table remember multiple time frames are in here and let's take a look right here these are buy stops sell stops buy stops buy stops so what happens retail traders see the gap a lot of them will just sell it I don't know why but that's what they do and then others are gonna when they have the lower open they're just gonna put stops you know above the open which is here that's that's you know retail trader behavior write this down if it's new to you and even if it's not new to you write it down anyway think like a retail trader don't act like one write that down and it should be in your trade plan at least it's in mine and the reason is it have to remember their behavior 
and not step in front of their behavior if I can help it. So, responsive buying. Now I'm looking for a short. Why? Here. Right here. Watch. We open, move up, move down. Shorts are going to get in here. This has the potential to get taken out. Watch. It gets taken out. Now I have the st what I call stop pick. Now this is just the way I, I kind of roll uh, with understanding gaps. Right? Think of it yourself. Where would the stops be? If the market opens lower and it goes down, do you think we might get some sellers? Well, I think we might get some sellers. Now it could also open and never look back. That's trading. However, if you take the time to do some research, you will see that often, and I can't say most of the time, I'm going to use the term often, you're going to see this get taken out because it's taken out the weak hands. Then, and here, here they are, thanks for playing, uh, and then it's what happens. Now, so far are you with me? Uh, other brother, it's not weekly composite. The composites are con consolidations. The week, the month, whatever, doesn't have anything to do with it. It's a consolidation is two-sided trade. It's an auction. And what happens is it's the buyers and the sellers on both outside edges trying to, and it, that's the auction. One side's going to be wrong in a consolidation, and when you come out of it, then you get an acceleration. Also inside a consolidation is the high volume. So here's here's how this works. Now again, nobody knows, right? But here's how I use this. I'm going to uh, this is called VPOC migration and track with me. The VPOC, this, the volume point of control, and remember on the open and make a note of this it is extremely sensitive because this resets at RTH open which is 830 my time so this is like zero so the first volume that comes in it's showing your volume right here and then as the market moves down you see the volume transacting this is moving down with it so that it all it's doing is measuring volume now I understand the possibility of this responsive buying and sellers who sold the gap with their stops here. I cannot get short. I need to have this. And then I have to look for structure. So let's take a look. I just want to make sure you're tracking. So the volume point of control moves down here. This is suggesting this is too high. So now, but because I have this, I cannot do anything. So we come down and I'm going, I don't know come up take them out now I'm on alert because this is the weak hands coming out the volume point of control shifts up and it's representing this volume remember volume point of control is retail in this structure so just watch we break down the volume point of control shifts down this is I call this VPOC migration please take notes what is important what does it say this is the last auction in the microstructure. This chop, chop, chop is a consolidation. The volume is here. The volume breaks down. What does that say? This is your convenience store. If you were here from the beginning of the stream, you know what I'm talking about. This was the retail price in this auction. The market breaks away from it. Where does it come back for a price check in aisle three? Here. This is my first short off you go everybody see and I'm the reason I'm t spending time this is micro structure integrated in a higher time frame with anticipated behavior of responsive buying and a stop pick and then the behavior of the volume is giving me an indication that once and again this shifts up here I don't know but when it comes down remember it's saying is there's more volume here than there was up here. That saying is that was unfair. That's your convenience store uh, for your pint of ice cream Saturday night, 10 p.m. Right here. Short. Any questions on microstructure and the auction in these fractals?
Uh, Geo Capital, it is a big consolidation, but what I'm doing is looking at the microstructure because uh, now when you say big, which consolidation are you referring to, uh, Geo? Are you talking about the higher time frame ones? Um, or are you referring to the inner day? Uh, that, he's in YouTube. 15 second delay in YouTube. So. Oh, Geo, you're in two places at once, Geo. You're really, you're like in stereo. Anyway, I don't, I'm not getting a response, so uh, I will move on. So, we still good, guys? You still got audio? Just want to make sure. Yeah, okay, great. Thanks. Okay, so this is your first short. Price check in aisle three in the uh, microstructure, too high, short. And to put it in perspective for you, too high. Too high. See the price checks? So we just did something like that from below. That's all we did here. Price check. Target. Price check. Same thing. Okay? That's the generic aspect of the auction. If you can understand what's going on out there, you understand what's going on in here. And what this is representing is the auction and the behavior of the participants. This is about as close, in my opinion, as you can get, as they say, to the action. Because I don't want an indicator that finally rolls over and I'm getting involved here, which is not where I want to be involved. I want to get involved here. So I can get scaled. And where's my target, by the way? It was here. Right? In the overnight low. So let's... Uh, this has a statistical probability of over 90%, either the overnight high or low. That's my scale. This is the target. So, short, scale, helmet. Okay? Then it's trade management, whatever that is for you. So let's move on. This, let's look at the same process. Too high, break, trigger, pullback, short. Off you go. Pull back to where? Price check in aisle three. Return. What's it saying? See, you got to listen to it. It's speaking. This was too high. This is shifted down. Retail. That was too high. Now what? Pullback. Is this still too high or are we going to now come through? Again, I don't know. Except I know the trend is down, right? Price check. Potential short. Still going to target. Now we get the target. There's more. Watch. Moves down. Where do we come? Here, here. Price check. A liquidity in the book. Potential short. Where to? Back here. Price check. Anyway, I'm not going to spend more time on this, but I think you can see the symmetry and the behavior. If anyone doesn't understand what's going on and why, by the way, what's right above here? Thirty-nine thirty. Let's take a look. So stops are above here. Retail price is here. Okay. Let me just zoom a little bit more for you. This is outside edge. There's your open. See the book? Right here. This means there's a seller sitting up here. So I'm looking at that. It comes into the book. I have, you see this here? Now I don't normally go into this. There was somebody who was, who sold here. They had more, but this comes back in. It's telling you there's potentially, underlying potential, more business to be done. 
It's another short. Where to? Back to VPOC. And then wherever, you know. This is the initial balance low. On a trade like this, this is the first hour low. Now we hit my primary target, which doesn't mean anything. So I'm not looking at the moment for more extension. If it gets below here, I, I turn the boat around. So at the moment, this is rotational trading. This is becoming something called mean reversion. So this is context, guys. This is what I talk about where you can get scrambled. We are directional. Now we're rotational. This is the target coming down. This is the first hour low. I don't know if we got there, did we? Close. And now back and forth. So you guys wanted to see real time. This is as close as I can get. Now there's other opportunities if you have a trade plan for it. If you don't, these were the primary opportunities that we discussed in the Trader Lab. If you are building a trading plan and you can understand auction as far as why. See, we never understand why. We typically start out looking for an indicator and it's like a plug and play. Is that logical? Does an indicator tell you the condition of the market and maybe when an indicator might be appropriate and then when that indicator is not, you see? Now that's just a question and the reason I ask the question is when I develop trading systems um, which are really call it uh, process and mathematically oriented which is price based right um, I ran into all kinds of problems with them and that's why you tend to be optimizing in system design right well you guys are probably doing the same thing you're just tweaking that's optimization if you're running multiple time frames you're attempting optimization you may not realize it you may just think well you know it's like getting in there with the remember you used to get a screwdriver and, and tweak your carburetor those of you who remember <laughs> before fuel injection you know um, it, you, it's tuning right well tuning is optimization and all you're doing is looking backwards to th somehow think it's going to tell you what's going forward well what's telling us what's going forward is what's happening right now right here right here and that's how we use order flow that's how we use the auction and the auction happens in multiple dimensions in other words this is an auction too low too high see too right here outside edge low volume this is a consolidation inside of that consolidation are more micro consolidations so we can see the same process happening and these give you the opportunity to participate but you have to know where you are this is an outside edge we pulled back to the mid what do we anticipate at the mid sellers what else is at the mid stops what's at the VWAP stops now this would be a place that retail traders get engaged right and it may be just a wonderful spot however what is sitting here stops so for me it's a very cautious location it is a short but there's stops up here so these are vulnerable so whether or not you would get short here is subject to your trade plan the trend is down right so you would be outside in but this is your obstacle below and you have stops sitting right here so you have to ask yourself is this a trade use and this is not a recommendation it's this is about the context and remember the first thing I asked you to write down was think like a retail trader don't act like one so they sell this and their stops are sitting here this might be a wonderful place to be short for me it isn't because I don't care about the trades that go away you know oh gee look it went 20 points my trade plan wants to see stops taken out because retail traders as you guys know don't have a very high success rate if you don't know that percentage you're not paying attention and then I want you to ask yourself this is just sort of a side bar why and I think you can come up with the answer if you think about it so do we want to do what they do or do we want to use what they do as a potential asset so let's watch the behavior here so you guys know and it's not a recommendation to either for action or inaction is I can't sell this and watch 
and in the meantime ask some questions uh rare the um um well rare that's a tough question um as far as key levels uh when you refer to context you mean reaction to key levels and where we open yeah well, where you open in relation to the previous auction think about what goes on what's the purpose of the market here's the stops by the way right this is why i cannot get involved now this is an outside edge of a consolidation now i want to be watching not a recommendation we just want to see behavior right here is a micro high volume node right here let's watch not a recommendation for tourists remember that because anything can happen in the market right let me pull this now this here notice the book what's what let's watch and there's micro high volume right there that is reflected in the volume that took place over here if you consider this your convenience store at the time this was too expensive and we broke away. What is the market's propensity? Come back and check. Price check in aisle three. We got the stops out, so these guys are out. Now we have to see. You see there's more stops coming out. So we're going to look over here, which is in alignment with this outside edge. Watch. Not a recommendation. Remember, in trading, it's maybe. Let's see what it does. Are you guys tracking? So this is microstructure, and it's only an air. Here's how I use these. Remember, I'm talking fractals, right? The way I think about it, and I don't know what other folks think who do what I do, you know. I've kind of been off, you know, uh, doing my own thing for quite a while. So I really am not, and I don't go out on the Internet and look at what other people do. I'm kind of allergic to that. So um, I've just kind of developed this kind of look, the way to look at it. Uh, it's got to be, I don't know, over, let's just say a long time. Nine, ten, eh, maybe 15. I started trading market profile in 1985 or 86, somewhere in there. Uh, original market profile. And I couldn't do anything with it. First year or so, I was because it was rule based you know this is that and I came from systems so I'm just mentioning to you I came from systems so everything to me was somewhat structured you know percentages and probabilities and you do this you know rule 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 rules right well over time I, I, I couldn't operate in that What I because the market is not a rigid structure it's fluid and it's continually changing because it's an interaction of buyers and sellers that's what's going on right here buyer and seller buyer and seller for every buyer there's a seller so then it was well why and what is it trying to accomplish what's the purpose of the market it's the interaction of the buyers and sellers in all fractals and time frames so the guys that interacted up in here and found this too expensive at the time and then they came back here and created volume and broke away then we have the potential right here to come back and check and then the book is up here this sets up the short, not a recommendation. I'm not saying it's a, anything more than behavior. See the alignment. See the book. See the rotation. And this is outside in. So this is mean reversion. It needs to get below here. Outside in. In other words, I'm not paying that. Retail. Now, let me. I'm showing you behavior. These are not trades. I'm showing you that, for example, let's let's assume you have a trade plan, hopefully, and you decide that this is a short for some reason. Uh, this is your obstacle. Price check in aisle three. This is retail. This at the moment is too high. This was too high. So you have alignment. This is your obstacle. So you have to scale 
here. Not much room, right? So when I look at these things, I'm just telling you, me, and it's not a recommendation. You have to come up with your own thing, you know. I What is the range from my entry to my obstacle? I have to get a scale. If I don't have enough range to get risk neutral, I cannot put the trade on. Again, that's just my thing, you know, because there's so many buses coming by. Why not wait for a better bus? So that's why I can't do this. But I want you to see the structure. So let's watch and see how it behaves. Because I can't enter here, you know. If any of you guys can, you got you got uh, direct message me. We'll talk. But so for me, if I'm getting in, I'm going to be getting in down here. I got a scale here. How can I make that make some? You know, because my risk is going to be from entry to this. So I have to cover that before here. That's pretty tough, don't you think? So that's why this trade doesn't fit my trade plan, but it fits the auction structure. So even if it's not doable because of range, the auction doesn't care about the range. We care about the range for risk-reward. The auction behavior, though, you will see it all over the place. Now, and that's why this is important level. So let's go back. Retail in the microstructure right here, right where that node is, right there. The book, pressure, target, not a recommendation for scale, and then down here. If it works. If it doesn't work, it's just one of those things. But I want you to observe it. Do you have questions about structure and auction and the potential mechanics of this thing? Uh, Rare's asking me if the POC is more important than an HVN. They're really the same. Uh, the thing is that this is for the, the whole day, developing time frame. The micros, which is what this is up here, is just this auction that took place over here. That's why this is the area to lean on, you see. So it's the same behavior in, in micro. That's why I, when I talk about auction, I'm talking about fractals. So this is right, right here which we talked about. Now, that's not about me being right or wrong or anything. I have no clue. I mean, I don't. right or wrong is not part of trading, in my opinion, because we don't have any choice. Because if we wanted to be right, we just skip the ones that don't work, right? <laughs> so our job is, it's random in the sense of what might happen here. So this is our area to observe. This is our obstacle. So, you know, that's what's going on here. And that's about it. You see we're at this outside edge. So in theory, what we're looking at is what's called mean reversion, which is a return here. I might have done it already. You know, I don't know. So we'll see. Let's watch this. Look where we are. This is what you have to always look left. Here's the volume. Here's the book. We got alignment. Watch. This is where we're trying to go. Not a trade recommendation. Let's just see. And here's how I think of the auction guides, and I and I, I want you to think about it. If I mean, if you find this at all useful to you, is can I mentally stay aligned? Can I understand what creates price movement? Can I understand what volume represents? Remember, volume profile. Why is volume important? because of what it says. So we'll see. Now this is just like any other thing, you know, can do anything, right? I don't know. This layer here, this is an important price point. This, I mark it, call a variable high volume node. All it is is I track the position of the VPOC as it's developing. So we have the potential to still come back here or whatever. So let's see what happens here. So now this is the next area. Now what you'll notice is happening is we're coming outside of this distribution. Now we want the outside edge, but of course we want it to come back. That's why this is your obstacle. Because if it was lower, it would have the potential, you know, from here to come back lower. But because it's in your face, 
and which is why the trade doesn't qualify is because it's too close that's why a trade plan you got to have now when we come out here this is another location to observe but you got to remember there's stops sitting here here's another piece to remember this was our target in a higher time frame so you see we can rotate now that's why this is mean reversion it has changed to rotation balance so let's look at the little bit of a higher time frame here let's look at this thing RTH open there so what's it doing see down down back down back chop right big consolidation now so the thing to be aware of we may be done for the moment so we know that here's the other thing the other short we had from here went this was the target got down there didn't take it out what are we doing rotating this is mean reversion do you guys know the difference between a directional context and now rotational this is when I talk about context and look where we are VHVN another location just watch too high too high potential back here or not you see this is auction and what let's listen to it too high too high right here too high too high right there potential back here or not is this making sense this is how you dance you know there's that was a TV program dancing with the stars to me this is dancing with the market um, and all we're doing is uh, interpreting what the participants are saying it's not complicated if you don't think this way see this is why the stream is about mechanics auction market theory why is the market doing this you need to understand the why if you understand why then you might be able to dance with it now we don't know what it will do I haven't gotten that figured out yet but we know what it might do that's all trading is it's maybe so here look what's happening here we just the VPOC just shifted up that is suggesting this might be too low at the moment so this is my next check potentially I have to be on guard right now this is called VPOC migration write that down what that is saying is let's look at what it says okay too high too high shifts up too low trend is down so now this this is something I have to observe right here I this is potentially where I'm gonna go so if short there is enough range right not a wreck I don't give trade calls but I'm kind of giving you this the shall we say the lay of the land right you can see it right there so just trying to give you a little sense this is your scale ahead of this now you hold where are we looking here why we didn't take it out last time down and there's stops let's observe not a recommendation anybody have a question um rare the biggest trades i i don't know where the biggest trades are going to happen you know i i all because to me it's all random what i know is i have to wait for location i have to have enough range to get to an obstacle you see the behavior here this is at the moment saying potentially if we don't get below here see where we came it's too low this is a kind of a 
area of caution for me, and not a recommendation, because it has to get below here. If I can't get below here, then I can rotate up again. So, you know. But if I got short up here, which is in alignment, right, uh, I'd be scaled. So I have no risk. And this is in the Trader Lab things we discuss in developing trade plans. And, and we keep it simple because in trading, I think you got to build the foundation of understanding. If you are in a hurry and you don't understand how the market works, um, then I think you're shortchanging your opportunity uh, to be in the business of trading as a long-term participant. There should be no rush. In fact, uh, you should kind of approach it. In, again, this is just how I think of it from my experience and what I've observed over a few years of trading of other retail traders and what's happened to them is don't be in a hurry. Go slow. Because if you need the foundation and an understanding of how the market works, and then you can overlay other things, you can add setups, you know, locations to interact. Um, and we go over all of that in the Trader Lab. You know, there's 60 PDFs that are available, uh, you know, that you can download that show you all these behaviors. Like this one right here. See? So if you understand what created this then you understand why we're coming back to it say as opposed to you know and now this is nonsense this is algorithmic behavior but it's useful if you understand how to use out you know uh, the book and um, if you're interested in order flow and how to use you know uh, order flow tools you know book map whatever um, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, not next Monday, but Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, uh, we have excellent um, free webinars and streams on Strictly Order Flow. And it's not restricted, shall we say, to futures like what I do. It's stocks, options, futures, crypto. Because the, the behavior of the auction is generic. you know. So you're going to see this behavior in all financial products. In fact, if you go to eBay, you won't see it, but that, what is eBay? Isn't it an auction between a buyer and a seller? It's all the same. Notice how this trade is working. If, you know, and again, I don't call trades. Notice the alignment. Horseshoes and hand grenades. Notice this. If we get below here. Where's our target again? Not a recommendation. This. That makes it worthwhile to me because now I had enough range to get risk neutral and put a, a, a few pints of ice cream in the freezer. Now it has to come back here to take me out and then I just sit for this. We'll see how it plays out. Not a recommendation. I'm just giving you an idea of structure, what it means. Now we checked here. If I can't clear this, then this, may, this trade may fail. But it won't fail completely because I have no risk and I have a few hamburgers and a pint of ice cream in here. So that's it. Here's my high volume right here. So this is my area right here in alignment with this is where the trade would fail. So we'll, we'll see what it does. And all that would happen, and this is at least my plan, and I'm not recommending anybody do what I do, is the worst that can, ha the worst that can happen to me, unless something, you know, strange goes on you know like somebody tri trips over the court at the CME is I scratch or I take a few dollars and put them away so that's how my trade plan works risk management first risk is the job number one attempt to get risk neutral basically I'm buying the trade and like everybody else if my location is off I pay the price to discover that but I understand the auction and then I understand why this was the potential you do too if you understand auction then it's now what well if this is too low then we'll squeeze that's all there is so it's do, is this too high still this auction right here you see the high volume or is this too low right now it appears this is too low and this is potentially going to get squeezed that's all I need to know because after that I don't know 
Does that make sense? Uh, order flow education. Yeah, I do I monitor the spoofing? Not really. Um, I see it, but I have a priority of inputs. You know, I kind of have a sequential process. And what it is is how do you, when you think of all the things we're looking at, you know, you know, rotations, whatever, the auction, high, micro high volume structures, things like this. Um, what is the priority? And this for me uh, early on was the conflict, and that was indicators. You know, uh, one is saying go long, the other is saying is not ripe yet, the higher time frame is over here, the shorter one's doing that. This didn't cross over, oh, this one is. You know, the shorter time frame, of course, you know, crosses quicker. It, oh, is the five minute today, or do I use the 15 and the five, or do I use the two minute, or the one minute, or a tick chart, or a rank? What am I doing? Because it was a constant. The thing is, you look at you look at your chart and you see this great rotation, and you're saying, how do I get my indicator to get me in that trade? Because and I think for many of us, we somehow think the indicator is going to solve the issue. Uh, at least I thought, because that's all I knew when I started out. In fact, when I started out, we didn't have them. <laughs> when I started trading, we didn't really have indicators. Um, we it, it, the technology hadn't quite was just developing. Um, Wells Wilder, if you guys are familiar with him, he you know, published stuff, um, you know, ADX, DMI, uh, parabolic stuff, all that. And then classical bar charting. So when I started out, it was really bar charts by hand, <laughs> you know. So, uh, you know, get your pencil and your ruler out. Um, so that's, you know, classical stuff. So I kind of started with that. So, and then as indicators involved, we thought, oh, the Holy Grail's finally here. Well, not so much. So the confusion that indicators create if they're in a vacuum is they're not in alignment. Um, if you can get a handle on context and how the market changes, you know, like this, this is different behavior, isn't it, than when we just were coming down. See, continuation. Now we had all those. Remember, this is our target. See? So now I'm in what? Different behavior. I'm in rotation. I can trade rotations. But, you know, I have to have location. That's what the auction is doing for me. It's giving me levels where the market had behavior. Here, here, alignment, here, alignment, you see. And there's no precision in trading, guys, you know. It, it, that's why, remember, you know, we draw a trend line and somehow we think a pencil is going to do something, really. Or we have a Fibonacci extension. You know, what is that? It's a line. It's nothing to me because the market is made up of the participants. It's not made up of a Fibonacci level or anything. It's the auction. So it's kind of how, what is the basis of all this behavior? It's the auction because what's the purpose of the market? Go back to what's the purpose of the market. It's to discover a fair price. And th what is the market doing? It's auctioning. It's going, ah, that's too high. I'm not paying that. Yeah, but it's a great deal down here. Yeah, but that's still too expensive up here. I'm not paying that retail, right? I, we left it behind. It's like the shoppers left the store. Where are the stops? Let's think like a retail trader, but not act like one. Here, will it get there? Clueless. Can you guys see a process? That's the first thing. If you can interpret a process, can't you build something around it? Maybe. Uh, PSC, the order book, I'm always suspect of the order book, but if you look where behavior took place, you know, you're asking me priorities, and uh, for me, the chassis is this, what, because this represents the interaction between the buyer and the seller, that's all this is, okay? And we also have to think about retail trader behavior. Does anyone think it's an accident that we got a rotation from the mid in the VWAP? Does anyone remember why I said I can't get involved here? Why? Retail trader behavior, very consistent, stops above here. Then I'm looking to the auction. Right here, 
we got offers in here. Right here, I have this level, right here, as backup. And I have the auction that took place in here. Here's the high volume right here is a micro VPOC. So it's the same as this, except it's in a micro structure. So that's why I'm seeing the same behavior right here. So that is the same as this, which is the same as this in the higher time frame. Can you see why this is fractal? If you can think of it that way, then when it comes to areas and it's aligned with the context, don't forget, and your trade plan, don't forget, then, and you understand retail trader behavior, what, down here, you know, we may never get there, by the way. We could come back up and just, you know, slam everybody around because we're in balance. But what is mean reversion? Oh, it's on sale. I'm not paying that. Yeah, but it's on sale. I'm not paying that. It's on sale. I'm not paying that. See? Back to retail. Now we're going to look for too low, potentially, unless we continue higher and squeeze these stops that are above here. you got to remember that. So currently, what do we have? Downtrend, mean reversion, outside in, no clue. Stops under here, but the caveat is we already checked higher time frame retail, and we're above it. So this might be done for now or all together. And now the shorts that are sitting in here might be on the chopping block. It's always maybe. So that's what you got. So if you're getting short, you got to scale, get risk neutral. If you're getting short, you got to scale right to here. You see it? Risk neutral. Now you're, you're hanging out and you're betting, and that's what this is, this. If we don't get there, then squeeze it area. And then all these guys who are short will get taken out. That's as complicated as this is. So let's hang out and see what this does. Okay. Is it logical? Does it make sense? Uh, the small dots. Uh, and the dots are showing uh, delta. And what is more important to me is what's going on in the microstructures. Here's an interesting thing. Here, let me show you what I'm referring to. Uh, this is our stop and iceberg indicator. And I'm only, and I shouldn't use the term indicator because it's not an indicator. It's just reading the orders, you know. Uh, the CME uh, marks, tags the orders with the type. You know, is it an iceberg? Is it a stop? Stops become uh, market orders, right? Buy stop. So here you'll see 14 stops go off. Over here, coming up 33 stops. That's divergence, right? So that is saying to me, potentially, exhaustion. Because who are the buyers? Stops. So these guys initiating are getting squeezed. In my opinion, squeezed. That gives, that gives me more reinforcement than the short. Because remember, who are the buyers? The book, if you'll notice, is moving down. That's pressure. So you know we have a short, right, in theory, not a trade recommendation. And you know where we're going. Theoretically, not a trade recommendation. So liquidity is sitting in the book. We want to see their behavior. This is an area to observe. And uh, anybody not see the rationale? Yeah, a location of interest, engage. It's almost like Star Trek, you know, engage. Uh, I, at least for me, it's all about location. What creates the location? Why did it happen? And I'm not somebody who picks a high or a low. I'm still working on that. I've only been doing this for 42 years, I think. Maybe a little longer now. But um, I have never... In fact, you know, early on in my trading, it was like, you know, oh, it's ego. I can pick the high. It's going to be here. It's going to be there. If you're still doing that, I suggest you try something else. What I do is I want somebody else to be the brave soul or the exhaustion. I want to see this. I want to see the high volume in this structure. I want to see the pullback. 
and I want them. You see what I'm saying? This happens everywhere. Here, high volume, break. Where's the pullback? Here, break, high volume. Where's the pullback? Here, with divergence. You see, these are all potential triggering structures. Uh, not recommendations, triggering structures. Can you see it? Here, divergence, break, pullback. Didn't get there? Tough. Nothing to do. Sorry if I sound a little... I didn't sleep well last night. I was too excited about getting short this morning. <laughs> Sorry. Target. Why? Retail trader behavior. What's below here? Stops. What didn't happen last time we were down here? We didn't get it. So what does that mean? Ripe. Is everybody tracking? Uh, Dom, I didn't. I was never on the floor. I started out as a screen trader when we didn't have screens. Uh, Sorensen, what are you asking me? Um, yeah, Sorensen. Yeah, the the reason I, I this is target is it hasn't been checked and retail trader behavior is going to be under here. So, you know, for me, this is a target area. I don't care if it goes through. I don't care if it makes a new low. This is a trade for me in my trade plan. See, I don't care about, you know. Now, you could do this with... Now, here's the other element. And the reason I, I kind of stick to this, uh, in the trader lab, we talk about two lot. One, to secure the risk. You know, so you can scratch if it comes back, and and, this, and it's structural. The structure has to fail. And then targets, retail trader behavior, and where everybody. Now, the fact that this liquidity is sitting here, and they're back in the book, and we're starting to thicken up. Um, you know, this is my area, and the trade is done. But I'm okay with this. I don't know about you guys, but I can live with that. What do you think? So when I started out, though, um, all the guys I, I basically hung out with were all floor traders. And when I started out, there was really no technical analysis. It was really charts, mostly. And technical analysis was just kind of starting to evolve. We didn't have, uh, you know, like the trading platforms. Uh, my first uh, good trading platform was uh, a CQG TQ 2020 it was like I think it was their first one and it had you know different time you could have a 60 minute a 30 you know a 5 and it was bars there were no candles at the time um, and then uh, I worked with George Lane I shared an office with him he created uh, Stochastics on an Apple one so I'm giving you an idea you know where we were and uh, he created an, that oscillator and then so when that came out and was available and you know I was sharing that office with George it was like oh my goodness we ha now have the holy grail and it kind of was for a little while until every you know until oscillators and then derivatives of oscillators uh, became popular so but that was kind of how I got tiptoed into tech the uh, actual technical you know mathematical stuff and then uh, started uh, writing code for trading systems everything evolved out of that but I always thought it was mathematical I mean, it was mathematical because we didn't have volume profile. Um, Peter Stottlemyre created the market profile in 1985, I think it was, and I learned it from him. Uh, he had a thing called the Market Logic School. And even back then, I, it cost a couple thousand dollars, you know, which was real money back in the day, you know. So, so that was the only way you could learn is either buy a book or go to a seminar. But when I saw this, and, uh, I mean, market profile, plus I knew guys on the floor, uh, you know, who knew about, you know, at the CBOT in the grain pit. Um, I think that's where he was. I can't remember anymore. Um, you know, they said, yeah, you know, he's interesting, you know, statistical. So uh, I got interested in that. Anyway, that's just a, you know, a deviation from our target area. Now you see this in the book? You see this in the book. Uh, what is going on here? 
here's something to think about and i'm not the order flow guy all right i don't consider myself uh very good at it because my thing is the auction so this is not a primary input it is important to me when i'm in an area because now here's the thing with this here's the question for you guys who are thinking order flow is this a buy and is this a sell how about these guys are putting their orders in the book to push the market up and to get guys like us long so they can sell use this rotation to get short and then they pull this or or are they going to pull this and open the door to go up and i don't know the answer by the way but this can be spoofing and all kinds of crazy stuff and it might just be so they because they can be operating in here and you guys which means me am i going to get long am i going to cover what should i do so we're going to let's just watch what happens here because i have no clue so when i talk about my inputs and my priorities it's not this but i am aware of this here and this is my level so now we got to see what happens should i be covering here I could be very happy being out of the trade because they came up, they pulled. We can come back here or not, or could just come back to this. I mean, it could do whatever. So it's mean reversion. This is the target. We didn't get to it. Would I be okay being out? And the answer is yes. Not a trade recommendation because the short was from where? Up here or up here somewhere, right? That's still a decent trade, guys. What do you think? If, if you know, and again, I don't call trades, but does that work? Uh, Stock Lounge, I was never on the floor. Um, I was an off-floor trader when there weren't any. I mean, the guys on the floor would look at me and they, you know, they just shake their head and walk away because they're in a different business. Um, I knew, I mean, we used to all hang out, but when I started... Um, Technical analysis was really in its infancy, other than charts. Uh, so it was really a fundamentally driven business, you know, of reports. And uh, when I started out, I think early on I was trading grains, you know, because the guys I knew were grain traders. In fact, some of them were one of the large, I worked with one of the largest wheat traders in the world, which was kind of interesting. He'd get a good chuckle out of what I was doing. So, um, Anyway, let's see what this thing does. No idea. Doesn't matter. See, for me, if I cover here, it just doesn't matter. This is the target, though. This is where the priority of inputs comes in, you know. Um, I typically don't. In other words, I see this, and I don't know what to make of it. I have to, and that's just the way, you know. There are others, I'm sure, who really understand I find it too nebulous and random. This is more important to me than this. But I do notice the alignment and the behavior. You see this? So that happened. This guy's back in the book. That's important. This is here. That's important. This is the outside edge of this distribution. In other words, consolidation. Right. So outside edge up into here get the stops out thanks for playing mid v whoppers right we got them done that was the key now and we don't know how far out it goes right there's momentum that's what stops create momentum that's why i can carry beyond so i have to get them out that's why now i could get short and if you're following you know right then it's once these guys are out wherever that is and look at the alignment right then potentially down to this. That's all this is. Too low, too high. Where's too high? I don't know, up here. Where's too low? Somewhere down here. That's it. That's as far in my mind that I need to go. I don't know where the high is. I don't know where the low is. I don't know where shorts will cover. I don't know what impact this will have. I know nothing. All I know is auction, which is my primary input, the chassis, retail trader behavior which is stops under here and the book is lining up again here which might mean 
they want to be buyers. I don't know. So we'll see. Okay? Is this logical, guys? Is it making some sense? Oh, no, I used to trade everything, Dean. Back back in the day, I mean, I traded everything. Not, no, not early on, you know, um, but I was, let's just trade. Um, I had 32. I'm trying to think. I mean, I traded most of the, you know, the different uh, products, you know, financials, uh, meat, grain, it didn't matter, uh, T-bills before bonds. Um before the 30-year bond. And then when the S&P came out, we called them pinstripe pork bellies, um, which I think was 82, 81. I don't remember. So I started trading. And those were the big S&Ps, $250 a point. And that, that's what I was swing trading, uh, two to three days swings in the uh, big S&Ps. Um, and then uh, currencies, I was doing trend following because, you know, currencies trend. So they were better... And then currency spreads, uh, things of that nature, before there were pairs. I mean, I trade a lot of different stuff. Metals, complex, energy, it doesn't matter. I mean, see, the thing about it is, it doesn't matter what the product is. I mean, the process of trading is generic. Um, if you're trading options or Qs or spies, um, crypto, no matter, you know, whatever your thing is, uh, it's all the same. So this process takes place in, because this is, this is how a market works. This is very fundamental to a uh, market. Um, so this is the market. Now, all this that happens in between with this and the algos and all this stuff, you know, that's noise, except if you can recognize why. Notice here, liquidity, reaction. Notice we come back, the liquidity comes back in the book reaction there's a buyer here why is this back in the book there's a buyer here right let's observe and we'll hang out together i'm almost done but i'm going to hang with you guys so we can observe the behavior i really you know i'm hopeful that you guys can see a cons what i do every day here is the same thing i hope you don't find it boring but the point i'm trying to make is in a trade plan it's a process, and for me, I don't change it. Been there, done that. My job is to wait and wait for things that make sense. Try to get aligned. Understanding of market mechanics, why? Think about it for yourselves if you're watching the stream, whether you're new here or you've been watching it you know, for a while. Am I doing the same thing every day? I think the answer would be yes. And if I do the same thing, what's the reason for that? It's because I need consistency to be able to measure what I'm doing. If I have random inputs, and today I'm trading off this, but not my auction structure, or I'm just throwing the dart at the board, you know, to get short wherever, uh, it's inconsistent. So my job is to be consistent. Otherwise, I have chaos. I can't measure it. Remember, here is the target. Here is the buyer. Let's see. So what might happen here? Why is this buyer here? What's below here? Stops. Let's watch. Auction. So now we're integrating the book with the auction. What might happen here? What are we anticipating? Stops, right? What is this buyer anticipating maybe stops let's see are you guys tracking by the way if this is of any interest to you if you're getting any value i invite you uh to come to the trader lab it's in the bookmap discord chat um there's a lot of free education in the uh trader lab there's a bunch of PDFs on these behaviors and structures that would, I think, save you time, you know, 
it's taken me a long time to come up with a lot of these ideas, uh, not to mention all the ones that get jettisoned. There's certainly a lot more. <laughs> if I, I can't remember the things I've thrown away, you know what I mean? Uh, and you've been doing this for a while. You've gone down so many dead ends, dark alleys, <laughs> you know, that at least I can't remember them except I know the years I've spent. Um, I've distilled a lot of this understanding down, so I think it might save you some time. Plus, in the Trader Lab, it's a collective of traders with very diverse experience uh, and approaches. It isn't just this. But um, I think an understanding of market mechanics and behavior is an asset, and especially understanding retail trader behavior, which is why I couldn't get short at that mid, even though we saw it, right? Remember? Why did I wait? Retail trader behavior. Why is this our target? Retail trader behavior. Why is this buyer still here? Good question. What's he going to be doing? Taking advantage of the other side of these stops that are going off right here. So let's see what happens. Now the market can do anything. It can keep going. It doesn't matter to me. Watch. So this being the short, not too shabby, right? Short. Short, no comment, target, trade's done, unless you have a runner. And you could do this with a two. I think that's pretty good. What do you guys think? If you're starting out, remember, if you're starting out, can you go on sim, gain confidence, once you are stable, which means you can follow a trade plan, then potentially, subject you know to all the caveats that you know, uh, can you move up to a micro? And the micro will give you the opportunity uh, with a, I consider, a relatively reasonable risk, again, subject to your trade plan account size, et cetera, and qualifications to trade, to trigger the emotional side of this. Because before you're moving on to the next setup and the next this and the next that, you've got to reconcile yourself with a foundational piece which allows you to attempt to integrate, uh, to vet ideas like this, and then trigger the emotions. Because your job is going to, your biggest obstacle, whether you believe it or not, and you probably don't, until you've been doing this a while, is what how you get triggered emotionally and how your brain gets flooded uh, with chemicals in response to this stimulus and how it causes you to lose control of your intentionality because your logic is overwhelmed with chemicals. You know, So you can have all the intention of the world not to move your stop or bail out, but at when the moment you're in that chemical condition which is triggered by the risk state, uh, you're out of your mind. It's like, you know, you're under the influence. Uh, you need to understand that. And you won't get that. You won't really, you won't experience it uh, until you actually put a dollar on the table. That would be the next thing I would suggest that you, you deal with. Because no matter what trade plan you cr you create, and it should be just something that gets you going, you know, in my opinion, you've got to deal with the, uh, that, the uh, psychological thing before you do anything else and again it's all subject to you know what's important to you but to me the biggest kept secret in the world even though we all sometimes talk about it but it's not thought about is um, these emotions and how they disrupt the best intentions and trade plan so build a basic foundation use whatever process you find is consistent that you can relate to uh, you know what my approach is um, experiment, get some metrics, uh, have the discipline to create a plan with the risk-reward ratio that's necessary to justify risk. You know, you need that parameter. It doesn't have to be complicated. Trading is not complicated. We make it complicated because we think in complexity it somehow reveals something, you know, that we're going to get something somebody else doesn't have. We're going to see what the other guy doesn't see. I don't think it's, I think it's the exact opposite. I think it's simple. And we obscure what's in front of us because we think complexity gives us some kind of edge. Actually, complexity removes the edge, in my opinion. Again, just my opinions. Not recommendations, nothing. So, here we are. So, what's next? If you had a runner, you know, 
you'd keep your helmet on. But the fact is, on a two, you'd be done. So the question becomes, is that okay? Uh, my stops, you know, guys, you just have to kind of find out what you need. I will show you what I have here. Um, one. Yeah, you know why? I keep it at one um, because I want to see everything. Now, for the alert, I'm not interested in it's but I don't have alerts set up on here, you know, because I don't want you guys to be hearing all kinds of chatter. And the reason is I don't want these filtered. I want to be able to open this up. These are aggregated, so you see what it is. As I open this up, it breaks them apart. And then as I zoom in, it just puts them together. So, you know, what I'm looking like here or over here, you know, I'm looking at this exhaustion. Notice this. This is exhaustion on the other side, right here. And look where it came. Hello. Huh. A coincidence. 484 stops. Lower price. Here, let me open it up. This is a rever This is a triggering structure. This is a long triggering structure. Now, let me let me clarify long. Notice 254. Lower price. Divergence 101 three or eight you see the divergence now why does it matter here 3905 that's a triggering structure so what do I do with this if you think it's a long you ought to come over here and flog me it is not what's the context down how might I use this well location exhaustion trigger Potential reversal, not long. How about cover? Not a recommendation. But do you see how I think about it? Because I'm trading the auction. Now, if we break under here, I have a target below. Somewhere. Let me keep looking. Here. I don't know when. I don't know if. I know nothing. Wasn't there a show? It was a Sergeant Schultz. See, you didn't think you'd get old TV, did you? Uh, Mason, no IBF. What's a trend? Exactly. The IBF, so you know, is a mean reversion trade. That means we come back above here, it's a squeeze, and we're going to return here. Uh, under In a balanced configuration, potentially, it would be a long. Back to here. In this configuration, since we're out of balance, it's nothing. What it is, is potential to come back here, but not a long. It's a covering. Is, can you guys understand the difference between... Now, if we were in balance, balance meaning uh, inside yesterday's range, two-sided trade, but who... Is there a really a buyer here? Or is it a short covering? Think about it. Do you want to get long? Or do you want to use behavior, which is going to be up here, instead of a long, and it's just a question, subject to your time frame and your trade plan, to get short? How do you think of this? What's the trend? Is the trend up or down? Inner day, we're in balance. It's rotational. This is the potential where we're going to go. This could be a long if your trade plan takes counter trend trades. Me, not so much. I want to go, think of um, counter trend as counter attack, you know. And when, you know how they send those guys up, hey, you guys charge this way, we're going the other way. So if you're stuck, if you are long, what are you going to use a counter rotation for? Do you think you might use it to get out? So when I'm thinking of the context and the trend, 
I want to be with the strong hands. I don't want to join these guys. I want to use their behavior. And what creates their behavior? Buy stops, buy stops, buy stops all the way up. Now, where does it stop? I don't know. So, because they're the weak hands. So, I want to watch. So, we're going to watch this for a little while, okay, and see the behavior. This is structural. This is your long, which means cover. See, that's me. You, up to you. So, if this is a long, it's not in the context. It is signaling to me a counter rotation. Where are the stops? Here, on the other side. And where else? Here. So this is my target. Let's watch it. Not a trade recommendation. And if you're asking me would I get, would I get long, per my plan, no. Per some of your plan, you guys would. But in the trader lab, we want to keep traders understanding context and help traders understand what the difference is between this and that. Why? Why is this a higher risk trade potentially than this? Right? And that's a question you, you should be able to answer. If you don't know the difference, then you got to spend time. You should come to the Trader Lab. If you're interested in the Trader Lab, go to bookmap.com. You'll see a little link that says uh, join uh, Discord chat. You don't have to be a subscriber. Um, you know, you'll, you won't be solicited, nothing. And there's loads of free education. Stocks, options, futures, crypto, order flow, how to use different tools in Bookmap, you know, all kinds of interesting stuff. Um, and it's available. So if you're trading the Qs or the Spies or you're a position trader, this auction is generic in the sense of time frame. If you're trading a higher time frame, you'd just be working these. You know, 69 was the number above, remember? Thir what was it? Uh, my brain is gone. 39.69? Yeah. You'd be working 39.69, you'd be covering here. Now let me ask you a question. If you're playing the options, and I'm not talking about the Qs, I'm just talking about the Spies, is that range workable if you're in that product? Because I think to make that product worthwhile, you need a bigger range. So then you just move up to a different time frame. That's all. It's fractal. And you still can use the inner day structures for triggering. You know, again, subject to how you do your thing. Um, not a recommendation. Is this logical? And by the way, if you come over to the Trader Lab and visit, there's 60 PDFs up at the top. You hit the pin uh, that you can download and take a look at. They'll give you ideas. There are things I've developed and that I posted um, for Bookmap last year somewhere. And, uh, you know, they put up there, which is why they asked me to do the stream, because they, I guess they kind of liked what they saw. And uh, plus a lot of traders, I was posting in the book, just a regular futures channel in Bookmap, uh, and there was a lot of uh, interest in the way I kind of slice and dice the thing, uh, the market. Notice the behavior. Is it logical? Also, there's an introductory video I did, which is also pinned to the top of the Trader Lab on auction market theory, volume profile, and kind of philosophical things, you know, how to think. You know, at least what's he developed for me over the years. I'm a slow learner, guys. So there were no, there was no internet, there was no information, so my learning curve was really slow because I couldn't get information. So I kind of existed in the vacuum. And there were not, we didn't have screen traders. That was the other thing. It was really, technical analysis was really thought of as voodoo. I mean, it was really looked down upon. So, because it was all fundamentals and reports back then, you know. So, um, but technical analysis evolved. But it just was not in the mainstream. So, it used to be more like open interest, commitment to traders, uh, reports, 
you know, supply demand kind of a thing, and then the market would adjust. I mean, reports still impact us today, but you know, we have other things we can look at. You know, like the auction and the profiles, which all we had was bar charts. You know, so you're looking at classical stuff. It's still, you know, we still do the same things, but we just have better tools today um, to see it. I think, um, but many of us go down the path of indicators. You buy a software package, there's an indicator in there. Um, I've always, and don't forget, I did that myself. But it, ask yourself, why are there 80 to 100 indicators in a software package? Why didn't we just need four or five? Why do they have that many? Are they all derivative, pretty much at the same thing? And if they worked, why would we need another one or another one? They don't work, in my opinion. And the reason they don't work is not that the indicator doesn't work, is that the indicator is not context sensitive. And uh, retail traders don't understand context or auction. They don't understand the purpose of the market and how it works. I think if you can get your brain wrapped around what this is doing and you can look at it right now with me and see why, you're going to have an advantage that other retail traders never get because they're still searching for the right tweak, the right indicator, the right combination, you know, a full moon, whatever it is. That's what they do. Notice the behavior. Was it clear? Now, if you're a counter trend trader, this is your target. See? If you're not, then this is your cover. I hope it's logical and I hope you got something out of this today. Are there any final questions? Yeah, Hogan's Heroes, right? That's a long time ago. The price is right. <laughs> price check. Where are the stops? VWAP mid, nothing to do. Outside edge, remember? Does this look familiar? Be a tourist, nothing to do. Remember what I suggested, and again, I don't know. This, buying structure, IB, once we come across here, it stops, counter trend, okay? Remember, what's your plan? Are you going to take this side? This is your target. Right? If you don't take this side, then you're looking to get involved on the other side, not a trade recommendation. If your trade plan was this, you would be long to here. Is it logical? Uh, oh boy, it's, I'm just sharing what I consider the basic overview of the auction. You know, what I do is not really germane, I don't think. Um, you know, what? just remember, I got 42 years of this, so what I do is not necessarily... Uh, is, let me just say, it's built on top of what I'm sharing with you. Okay, so I'm giving what I believe and... You know, you, if it's not, you guys can let me know. Kind of the basic foundation to build a trade plan. I can't give you the trade plan. I can give you the mechanics to help you determine, you know, based on behaviors, where you might want to interact with the market. Uh, and I'm doing it from one dimension, which is alignment with the trend. Now, the other side of that is, in a different con remember context, in a different context, I would be discussing two-sided trade. In this context, I'm only discussing one side. But depending on someone's skill level, there are more ways to interact. So, but if I think for traders who are developing, this long is a very dangerous proposition. For traders who want to get aligned with a higher time frame, it's the short is the trend. But the context in this at the mo so the higher time frame is a short. 
This is balance, two-sided trade. This is called mean reversion. So we got trade context inside context. That's confusing, isn't it? But let's put the pieces together. This is my primary target. We did it. So then what? Outside in, back to the stops under here. Then who knows, right? Check. Reversal. Cover. That's as far as I go because it's trend alignment. Or mean reversion because we're in balance. Check. Back to here if that's your trade plan. And for our conversation, that is not our trade plan. This, I should say. Covering is. Does that make sense? Well, I'm only taking shorts because, um, and I might not be taking any more shorts. This, is, this was my short. This was my obstacle. Price check in the big aisle still too low then what squeeze for the art conversation in the stream there's nothing for me to talk about about getting along here but potentially somebody else might i think that that's as far as i need to go with it does that make sense so this is either subject to your trade plan. And remember what we talked about. Stops under here. And the key was they weren't taken out here. So they were still sitting there. And this was our higher time frame location. See all the alignment? So cover or if you are a counter trend player, in balance, long back to here. And then punt. So so, neither here nor there. But I think you guys get the idea. Am I right or wrong? I hope you got something out of this today, guys. Let's see where we're going. Again, no trade recommendations here. We're just tourists, right? Watch this area. Stops are sitting here here let's remember what we have auction here here stops here here now let's watch let me just get back here a little bit always write this down look to the left this is a VHVN Variable high volume node. So we're going to watch this area, not a trade recommendation. We might be done at the moment, right? You see, this is if this, then that. If not, then what? Here is the target four to seven, right? Right in here, right there. This is yesterday's close, closed under this. Remember? First time we came to 39.69, first time, bounced right off it, counter-rotated. Came back later in the day, took it out by just a little bit, counter-rotated. That meant this was it. This was the low. Then, yesterday, we opened inside of this range. That created a two-sided trade because we had checked this in the higher time frame. So it was, right, we were trading two sides yesterday. We opened in range, so it was a two-sided trade, mean reversion. Then we closed under here. Warning, Will Robinson. What's next? This. Very logical. Now what? So far, so low. Too low. Then what? Potential to go wherever. We can come back to 69. I doubt it. But, you know, the market has the potential to come back and check this, just like it checks everything else. We just checked this. So might we check that? If we can't get back, doesn't matter. Like, we didn't get back here. We may never get back here. We might be in a hurry to get down here. 
And again, I don't know. My job isn't to know because I can't. I accept I know I don't know so I can keep my mind open, you know, to what might happen because this is changing all the time, you know. I mean, inner day, depending on your fractal and time frame, it's, it's always going to be changing. So let's observe. So you guys can kind of see along here, can't you? Or at least the cover, right? Is it logical? Any final questions before I, as they say, pull the pull the plug? Actually, I'm gonna I'll go a little bit longer. I'll go about ten minutes. So uh, ask your questions now. Um, Remember, trade plan, process, prioritize your inputs. If you can't prioritize them, you have randomness. That is not a good thing. I am not random. Market is. One of us has to be consistent. It's me. This, random. So the thing is, the the behavior though where is not now what happens no idea um if we take this out you know it opens it's like somebody opens the hatch and down you go if we don't or we can take it out and come back you know check it look what we did here this is insight provided by the participants and what they perceive is too low too high and fair you know it's an auction right auction market theory i hope i've demonstrated something to you guys today and every day about how the market works if you can get your brain wrapped around what the purpose why you're the shopper why would you buy an s p here well if this is the previous higher time frame retail price and we check it and the market says you know i think that's too low in the higher time frame what's the potential north north to where i have no idea who's in the market shorts where's their stops above the swings above the swings so this could be a, a long for our conversation nope but read between the lines right subject to your trade plan any questions guys Um, oh boy, I overlay fractals. So I start at the top. But what I for me the higher time frame is the daily, you know the uh, da- yeah, which creates like an intermediate time frame thing. So I'm dancing inside these consolidations, and when we come out of them, there's a lot of energy be released. That's what gives you the outsized uh, rotations, you know, moves. Everybody's. You know, because think about what a consolidation is. No matter what time frame it operates in, there's people, traders on both sides. And whichever side is off sides, that energy gets released. That's what created this move. Once we got back down here, price check in the big aisle, too low, triggering structure, reversal, north. Where to? Back to retail. So, Retail in the higher time frame, retail in the developing time frame, and then squeeze Ethereum. And who knows, right? So I hope it's logical. That's auction market theory. This is not complicated. If you're interested in it, you know, come over to the Discord uh, Bookmap Trader Lab, and I think you'll find it a lot of fun and, uh, and insightful, and maybe it'll help you, you know? I mean, there's no answer in trading. The other aspect of trading that I find is it's belief. In order to step in front of the, you know, the market and take risk, you got to believe it. Um, you got to believe you have something that makes sense, and you're not changing it all the time. If you're changing it, I, I suggest you get on, you stay on sim until you don't need to change it. You need statistics. You need to know 
a probability of one thing happening over the other. You need to know that if we check a retail price in a high time frame and we have a triggering structure, that, that, might, not, that might be a good idea to get out of Dodge. If you have a counter trend plan, then you might, understanding the context and the structure, you might get long to get back to mean revert. This is the mean. And then if you think like a retail trader but you don't act like one, where's their stops? Here, here, whatever. You know, open, maybe high of the day, no clue, doesn't matter. That's all this is. If you make it more complicated than that, you obscure what's in front of you. In my opinion. Again, this is just my opinion, but it's built on my experience. And it wasn't a pleasant experience, in case you want to know. I paid a lot of tuition, more than I think anybody should, because it took a lot of time. And it, a lot of dead ends. And for me, a dead end might mean one or two years on a, on a project, researching and, and working an idea that is logical, but is not functional in the sense of how the market operates. Before I understood how the market worked, and that took, believe me, a while, um, I was really chasing the wrong thing, and, but I didn't know it. So maybe by watching this stream, it might save you some time if you can relate to this. Um, but I don't. Say. Up to you. So, uh, YouTube, how are you guys doing? Good? I think YouTube passed out. If you, um, you know, I invite you guys all to the Bookmap Trader Lab. If you know, for nothing else, just uh, um, take advantage of the PDFs. There's 60 of them. And uh, there's that introductory uh, advanced webinar I did. It's pinned to the top of the Trader Lab text channel. Uh, also, during the day, I do drop in. Uh, and uh, continue narration and discussion of behavior. Um, and can you guys understand and see why we might be thinking long, which is not really germane in the what I'm attempting to do here, but let's just say we were talking about a counter trend trade or mean reversion, call it whatever you want. Can you see the logic behind it? If that was part of our conversation, which it's not. Uh, PSC, um, this was a long, but I'm not discussing that here. And the reason was this. Right there. And the stop pick. That's what the reason, this, that was the basis of these shorts, was this. Once we had a reversal, you'd be covering, right, or subject to a counter trend plan. And I'm just for our stream, I don't talk about those. Because, see, the idea is once you can deal with this emotionally and structurally, you will be able, once you are consistent. You, you, see, there's two sides to the trade, right? There's the long and the short. Well, if the trend we perceive at this point, at least, is down, we only want to be short. Once we get back here, then it's over. That's why in the stream I says you'd be covering, not getting along. Because the purpose of the stream is to get you the foundation. Because if you're only trading this side of the trade, I think you're okay, you know, at this point. Um, once you are consistent with the dominant side, assuming we're not in a balance. See, we're in balance now. This is contextual. But let's assume in the higher time frame. That's who we want to get aligned with. It's only shorts. Except now that's done because of that. Logical, right? And if you have a trade plan for this, it's a long, which we don't discuss because that's like, I consider that a bit advanced. 
because you could really throw yourself into a Cuisinart if you don't understand this really well. So think about it. If all you took were shorts, and that's all I talked about today, how many successful trades would there be? There'd be quite a few, wouldn't there? Right? See? So you never have to get long. If you're triggered with FOMO, that is a warning sign that you need to be thinking about. Okay? See the stops going off? That's all those shorts are just sitting there. Why would you stay short? Question. Why would you stay short? I can't imagine. Now, get long, different conversation, right? For my purpose is this, this, for you guys. And when you can execute in a disciplined manner, being calm and detached and just following your plan, you can then build on it and add. If you don't understand the context and the mechanics and how the market works, you're going to be zigging when the market's sagging. So it's like start with one side when it's one-sided trade. and then Don't worry about this. If your FOMO says, I want this, I want that, uh, not good, in my opinion. So, something to think about. Any last questions before I go? Oh boy, I expect the wrong word. I anticipate it's going to take out the eye behind. And the reason is, what's at the eye behind? Anybody? YouTube. Stops. Right. Fuel. So, for me, stops. Target. So that's what's up there. So I'd be trading into that. So theoretically speaking, if I was playing the long, which you know, scale, target, that's not a bad trade, is it? What do you guys think? And it's not a recommendation. I just want you to understand, remember, think like a retail trader, don't act like one. Stops are under here. Retail, thank you. Location, uh-oh, don't get below it, a Riverderci, counter trend, mean reversion, back to where, here, now it could have come here, you know, gone south, but what's more important, higher time frame at the moment, there, there, scale, punt, that's trading. Thanks, everybody, for visiting the Trader Lab today. Hope to see you tomorrow. We have NFP in the morning. Um, the other thing to consider is with a significant report, uh, you're going to get short covering. Right? Logical. Got to think like that. If you're short, would you be holding short or would you be getting out? Think about it. This morning, gap lower, responsive buying, squeeze -ateria then the short. Does that make sense? Now take it to the next time frame. You're short. You hit a key level, which most people probably don't even know about because they don't think like this. They don't understand auction or market mechanics. They're just out there with their indicators. Bang. Why? Ask yourself, why? Why? Can you answer why? If you can, now you're going to understand. If you can't, you got more work to do, in my opinion. And I'm here to help you with it if you find any value in this. I think this is something most retail traders never get to because they're long gone because they think the answer is in an indicator. I'm not against indicators. I don't want it ever to sound that way. I just don't think if traders don't understand context and this kind of behavior, they can't deploy an indicator. You know, Where would you be getting short with an indicator? Here? Uh here or long what here or would you be getting long here uh, would you be getting long here would you be getting short there would you be getting short here how about here where would you get short 
I, I don't know. Would you get short here? Or is it a long still? What would you do? What would your indicator? Your indicator doesn't know context. That's where the limitation is. When I was designing trading systems, I kind of figured out there was a problem. And it was because we would transition. I didn't understand context. You know, I, but I understood there was a change. And I wanted to try to get the system to change. In other words, that it would recognize, wow, we're not directional, we're getting rotational. But because the system is looking in the rearview mirror, by the time it would adjust, I was already, you know, uh, body slammed. So it was lagging. The, and that's the problem I find with an indicator. Besides, they're not contextually sensitive. They're also, it's like dri driving Formula One, but looking in the rearview mirror. I don't think that's a good plan, you know, Formula One or trading. Have a good uh, evening. Watch out for NFP. If you're interested in watching this again, uh, if you grab the link off of YouTube uh, before the stream ends, uh, you'll be able to watch it up until around maybe 6 p.m. Central Standard, and then YouTube removes them. If you're new to this, uh, I have several uh, videos posted up on YouTube. Uh, one is... Uh, inside day one says i think breakout or something and the other one is multiple time frame those three will give you some ideas on context and different mechanics if you will how to uh, operate in them because it is different uh, triggering structures are the same but behaviorally they're different so you need to adjust i think and actually have different trade plans uh, for the different contexts for example this is now what it, we had directional now we're in mean reversion, outside in, outside in, right? See how it's different? Well, if it's different behavior, I got to have a different plan. If you're if one size does not fit all. Take care, everybody. Thanks again. Uh, go to bookmap.com. Uh, if you're interested in joining the Trader Lab, um, you won't be solicited. You don't have to be a subscriber now, ever, or never to bookmap to take advantage of a lot of uh, free trader education. Um, I think you'll find it really helpful. Free is good. And it covers options, uh, stocks, cues, spies, futures, of course, crypto, uh, and order flow and other things, stock, stops, icebergs, uh, things of that nature. So there's a lot of uh, diverse um, education available to you, and it's every day. There's something. And now those of you in the Trader Lab, I will be active uh, after we stop the stream here. I'll be in the visit, uh, but I, as you know, I have my own thing to be doing here. Catch you later. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks for being part of the Trader Lab, and thanks for visiting. Remember, our hierarchy, our process. This is how it starts. This is where the rubber meets the road. But this is the basis of the whole thing. What's too low? What's too high? What's unfair? Where's retail? And the market's constantly looking. Where is it? Where is it? That's the job. Oh, it's on sale. I'm not paying that. Retail. Here's how we see it right here with this tool. What is the context? What is the time frame? I trade outside from the outside, so top down, inside out. So higher time frame into the lower time frames, or fractals. They're not really time, but that's how we think of them. So microstructures for initiation and trade management, you know, risk, and then the context for alignment, which changes in our day all the time. So it's that recognition and then adjusting. And then this is the tool to interact where I can get into microstructures, see the auction in the shortest time frame I can identify, stops, stop divergence, all those other items that are very useful order flow. That's my process. And this is what we do in the Trader Lab. Thanks again for being here. See you tomorrow. NFP.
HVN, microstructure, chop chop, nothing to do, tourist, but watch, see the structure and the counter rotation. Let's see if there's something else here of interest. So, a couple things to think about here. This is a selling structure, but it may only be a counter rotation. There's stop sitting here. There's a reasonable chance we're going to get there at some point. So, what do you do? Notice right here exhaustion, see it? 88, 19, stop divergence, liquidity, chop, chop, break, trigger, pullback, volume liquidity counter rotation these you should grab screenshots these are triggering structures now I don't trigger in a vacuum I you can learn the auction by narrating it mentally like okay here's the micro structure here's the divergence here's the liquidity so break pullback potential short. Now, before it's a short, it is at least telling you a counter rotation. To where? No clue. Right? Now, how might you use that? Is that maybe useful for trade management? If you're a short-term trader, is it a short mean reversion? Huh? See? What's your plan? Are you just going to hold for this? Or are you going to manage to trade and be out of it and not care about that? What's your plan? So there's two things you could do here. You could be out of this. Or you're going to ride out through this uh, counter rotation, but it can come all the way back here. What are you going to do? So before you ask yourself the question, or I should say, the answer you got to know the question I should say and you got to have an answer before this happens that's part of a trade plan so it would be okay long from which is pretty nice right scale to where here selling structure now what nothing something or what you put a question mark to and answer the question. But it has to be consistent. It can't be, well, mm, you know. What are you going to do? You need a specific plan to address this. And you're going to go, I don't know. Well, that's okay. You don't need to know right now. But you need to think about it. As a trader, what is better to do? Is it better to see a triggering structure and some alignment with the book right here exhaustion you see we're seeing a trigger right and then what break warning will robinson pull back and as soon as it fails you might subject to your plan be out of it i think it's still a pretty nice trade i don't know about you but now we're in mean reversion world back here so if you're trading mean reversion, well, you may or may not take the short. You might have just exited the long, looking to get long again. Or, subject to your plan, and again, I don't know. We don't know anything, right? This is a short back here, right? Can you see the possibilities? And all we know is what might happen. I know we might get over this thing. I know that we're in balance. I, again, I know this is vulnerable. Okay, mid VWAP VPOC are on. Write this down. Are on top of each other. That is balance. Write that down. Mid VWAP VPOC aligned balance. This is vulnerable. This is mean reversion. If you took a short, so remember what's the question? Exit the long, or take the short, or both. Write it down. Screenshot. Think about it. 
this is how you tear this apart. What I spent, I don't want to even tell you how long, deconstructing and reverse engineering, looking at it and thinking about what is it saying. Now, I don't know what it will do. When we figure that one out, we'll have the ATM in the basement. But since that's not probable, then the thing is, in trading, what is it saying? Can you interpret it? This is your convenience store, your little auction. Chop, chop, chop. See, chop, chop, chop. What is that? Too high, too low, too high. Retail, right in here. Break, trigger, pull back to what? Retail, short, see? Or, chop, 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 structure, break, pull back. You can't get above here? Jettison. You know, the canopy comes off and out you go. You push the eject button. Is this logical? Uh, Billy Bob, it didn't. Not for uh, not for the Trader Lab. I'm sharing with you guys some ideas. And whatever your trade plan is, that's what you should do. I wanted to share why this is a long, but it's not a long. I hope I'm I'm speaking out of both sides, aren't I? Because in the Trader Lab, if you're building a trading plan, this is not what you do. You cover. Just like this. You're out. Same? Isn't this the same thing? Bang, bang. Now, we didn't get here. It's still on the hip parade. But this is mean reversion. Why? If you wrote this down, mid VWAP VPOC balance what's mean reversion balance two-sided trade where might it go no clue back here if not say Laguerre that's all not more complicated than that so long mean reversion back here then the target is this selling structure Warning, Will Robinson. Break, pull back, can't get above, out, or short to here. Is this logical? Can you guys see it? So, guys, this is contextual. This is when I'm talking about context, and it can be mind-boggling of course, because it's changing. So in your trade plan, you need to have some rules that says, if this, then that. If not, then what? If short, if short, then that stops. Get a blow here, off you go. If not, then what? Come back here, reversal structure trigger, then that. Stops are up here. Then what? Then that. We get above it, then where? Here. Selling structure. Now what? Exit or short because we're in balance. You already know that, right? Mean reversion. This is context. You got to sort it out. If you're in a hurry and you don't get this part down, you don't need the rest, in my opinion, because it won't matter. This is where you got to spend your time. Now, we don't know what the market will do, where the price gets too high and the buyers run out of, you know, we don't know any of that. So don't think we're going to know that. What we know is the context. And then we can be aware of that. Now, if we take this out, it changes things. You know, we may take it out and come back in. It's then still mean reversion. But we failed. So outside in. Look where we're going to go. Is it logical? This is mean reversion with the mean, un, you know, underlined.
Are you guys tracking? I'm going to be cutting off the um, YouTube. Kind of went longer than I intended. Um, we'll go a few more minutes here since we're in the game here. So this is the target on mean reversion. These are not trade recommendations, remember that. Mean reversion is return to retail. So think of it like your shopper. Oh, it's on sale. Remember, this is too low at the moment, higher time frame. Oh, I'm not paying that. Retail, balance, potential to come back right here. And then, potential to come back to the other side or not again nobody knows but this is where you'd be going notice the book right here VWAP VPOC mid balance so that's what you got I think it's kind of uh, logical you know so in when we talk about the context we're doing it in multiple time frames right uh, we're doing it in this time frame, which is the higher time frame, right? Micro composite, which is your big consolidation using daily uh, candles, bars, whatever you want to call them, RTH only, and uh, and it's all logical. This. So this was the fair price in this auction, in this auction, okay? Right here. And where did we go? Once we got under 69, we go to the next level. If it's too low at the moment, then we can rotate. If we eventually take it out, what's next? Here. So that's how I, I do this. So I know if I'm under 69, now I checked here, so I have to be careful because and we have a big report tomorrow, you know, so there's a lot of stuff going on. But it fits, right? It's logical. It's got to watch out here. But still, this is a bit of a, you know, look at this. This is a potential buying trigger right here. Not to get long for a potential rotation. For me, this supersedes this. Because context supersedes everything. It's like, remember, the chassis is this and the context. So this shows me the auction, all these little, these are auctions. Up here, that high volume, which you can see here, is saying too high. So now where's the highest volume on the day? Now I'm in the fractal. So this is micro. Now I'm coming back to the developing time frame, which is this for the whole day, and then this is for the whole enchilada, which we already did. So maybe we're done. I don't know. doesn't matter to me. This is what matters to me. Short. Or out of the law, right? Pick one. That makes sense. Um, you know, Zoom, it takes time. I mean, all of this takes time. Uh, it's a different way to, to think. This is not like uh, read a book and it doesn't work like that. The real world really is more, it takes 
a, pro- a thought process and an understanding. It's like you want to be a doctor, anybody, by the way, and I mean me too. Um, you want to become a specialist or a professional, think of the learning curve to be excellent in anything, whether it's a sport or business or experience, you know, whatever it is, it takes time and education. And I, my, my personality type is kind of process oriented. You know, in other words, I think in a sequential pattern and, uh, because of, and in trading, it's about consistency. So, uh, I accept the randomness, you know, in other words, I don't know, you know, I mean, we come back here, I know what it represents, but I don't know what it'll do. Yesterday we got down to 69 and bounced off it initially. And then when we broke below it, it changed the complexion of the market. We went into then a breakout and uh, acceleration, which is why we're down here today. So I know that. But until it does it, I don't know it. Now here, we look what we did today. We came here. And now we're coming out of it. We still have this on the table. I would like to see it get here if I was short. I do have a, a reversal structure here, right? which I talked about, but I have to ask myself, what's more important? Well, to me, this is more important. And it doesn't have to ever get there, but we're in balance. So, outside in. Now, what happens here? I have no clue. Now, the other part of this is, how do you manage this trade? When you get the reversal here, are you out? Just like we had it here? See, what's the trade plan? That's what you guys, all of you, have to sort out. And it should be just, if this, then that. If not, then what? If I get a reversal, is that your plan to get out? Or is your plan to ride through a counter-rotation and risk giving back open you know, trade equity or MFE, maximum favorable excursion, in order to get that? Is, we got here, is that close enough? Or do we want this? What's your plan? What's your rule? Those are the answers you need to have. And then you just act accordingly per your plan. You don't change your mind. You don't go, well, this time I'm not going to do this. Or this time, you know, what? It should be the same. That's the only way you can measure it and then adjust it if it needs adjustment. If you're inconsistent, then you have random inputs. You, and you basically, if you watch my introductory video, you have chaos because you can't quantify it. Anyway, that's my two cents on that. It's illogical. Uh, yeah, vengeful, that's correct. RTH start. Yeah, the Balian indicator, I know. <laughs> I think I first became aware of the 12 to 1 stat in, oh, I don't know, 2010, 2012, something like that. So I keep an eye on that one. But it's not in play. So let's see how this thing does. Do we uh, get down? Remember, VPOC, mid, VWAP is our initial. Well, it doesn't have to be the initial. Let's just say target. Now, if you're running a two lot, let's go back. You're running a two. You're scale. You're risk neutral. You're going here. You put your helmet on, order in your, your lunch, and wait. All this is noise. You have to sort out noise and the willingness to give it back. We get here, we miss it by th whatever, you know, then what? If you're hung up on every one trade and it's like win or die over it, you're emotionally attached. You do need to develop a sense of detachment. Uh, not indifference, but detachment. Uh, that's all, all of that kind of circles back to the psychological problems, you know, which we all have, by the way. Um, Nobody, by the way, you can't short circuit the emotional state or the chemicals that get released in your brain. What you need to do is recognize them and short circuit them. In other words, go, yeah, okay, I know I'm feeling this, uh, but my job is not to react to it. My job is to understand it, uh, not react, you know. 
and then whatever happens happens because in a career in trading there's thou you know if you're new at this you might be thinking thousands of trades yeah thousands thousands tens of thousands it's really mind-boggling so then one trade is more important to do it consistently than it is the outcome of a trade of any one trade because they're all random in the sense of is it going to get here before it gets here i don't know the answer to that so i don't know so that part we don't know so you, there's no way and if your emotions are being triggered like gee it missed it uh, maybe i ought to get out right that self-talk that has to be you got to put a lid on that and accept the randomness because over time one trade that you know if you don't have a process for managing it let's just say you just go down with the ship or whatever you know uh then it's just one of thousands and over a distribution or a sample size more of them are going to get here than take this out probably uh past performance not indicative of future results so th those are things to think about you know Uh, market manipulation, Riz? Um, I don't know. What are you going to do about it if it is manipulated? In other words, Riz, that's part of the, the jungle that we're in, you know? Yeah, Ritz, it's always manipulated. Uh, uh, by manipulated, it means there's different actors in here with, with different agendas and time frames. There's HTFs in here, uh, you know, high-frequency traders. They might be going for a couple ticks. Um, there's the book that is manipulated, uh, algo behavior. And then there's us, you know. Uh, and we're at the, if you want to know where we are in the financial food chain, we're at the bottom. Because we're the least informed, the least so sophisticated uh, and we're the, the, have the lowest skill set because we are trading against the best in the world, and I mean the best. I'm talking like you know PhD uh, quants that are creating system processes. I mean you're just physicists, the best minds that can be hired by the hedge funds. That's who you're trading against. And if you can't take a passive attitude or do what other, in my opinion, again, this is just an opinion, what other retail traders are doing if you think you're going to be competing against these guys. So maybe doing something different, right, um, is the first thing. But you're not going to, in my opinion, you're not going to find it in a canned off-the-shelf indicator at all. And I can tell you, those guys are not doing that. Think about it. What are you guys going to do this weekend? Is anybody going to be doing some homework, some research? Is anybody going to be listening to the videos I've got posted on YouTube, the three videos? Is anyone going to be reviewing the primer video that's posted in the Discord chat in the Trader Lab? Is anybody going to be trying to increase and develop their trading skill set? Are you taking a passive approach? Are, are you hungry? Are you aggressive? Are you motivated? Do you eat and sleep this? Because it takes that kind of commitment, motivation, and persistence to become highly skilled and get an outcome that's different from the masses. And remember retail trader statistics. Not exactly encouraging. What is encouraging is those statistics are an asset if you know how to to you know how to anticipate their behavior that's what i do i i'm listen we're all the retail trader we're all the guys who would sell the mid we're all the guys who would sell the vwap or whatever and we were all the guys that got stopped out maybe we should think about that and maybe number one anticipate it number two don't do it interesting isn't it see this kind of behavior is algorithmic See this? Now, when you see this, if you think it's a long, not necessarily. What might be is a trap. 
get us long and they're taking the other side. Then if they pull this, watch. Now, I don't know what it'll do. I have no idea. So let's watch. There's no way to know. Is this really a buyer or is this a skew in the book to be able to sell it? Let's observe it. And I don't have the answer, but let's see what it does. thing with order flow is I never really know what's going on. That's why I trade the auction, you know, as a primary chassis. I don't know about what this is. Hindsight is always clear. But, so let's see. Remember, we got stops here. See? So you got to think out of both sides. I have no clue, you know. This high volume is like an over-under for this. Stops are sitting here, here, here. So now we got to see. 182 stops coming out, so it is short covering. We didn't get here. So now it's up to your trade management. Well, let's observe. I'll stay a couple more minutes. So the way I look at this, first of all, I don't know what's going to happen. So that's that's <laughs> the first thing. But see this? This is an auction. This is what was too high, right? This is the high volume node. This is like your VPOC. So we can come back here or not. If we don't get above here, then we still got this. If we get above here, then we got that. If this, then that. If not, then what? I don't know. Do I want to be out of the short? By the way, I don't know the answer to that. But here's what I know. 200 stops. Stop divergence. Microstructure. Let's see what it does. No idea. Kind of fun to watch the market, isn't it? Rob Davis. Yeah, we're the plankton. Yeah, Orion the artist, it might be a bot that's blocking you and it might be I don't I don't know why. Whether it's your name in other words where it's getting blocked from, so that I haven't seen. Yeah, hi Johnny. These are, this is a triggering structure, as you know. This is still our target. Now, I have no clue, right? This was our short. This is our target. Missed. So it's warning Will Robinson, right? Pull back against this. This is the auction that was too high. If we stay below here, there. If we come above here, there. How about that? After that, punt. That's trading. We are still in a mean reversion structure, but you know, shorts are in the market. They're vulnerable, of course. Let's see if we get down here. This is, you know, kind of where your intestines get kind of tested. 
you know, because this is where uh, emotionally, if you're sitting short, what you have to put yourself in the mindset. What's my trade plan? Do I get out? Where's it fail? Isn't it above here? Are you able to live with it if all this you give all this back and it does take you out? Do you bail out because you're triggered emotionally? But the structure hasn't failed, you see? It might. Those are the questions. You should be writing those questions down because you've got to answer them. You don't answer them while you're feeling the emotional. You have a trade plan. You've got to pull your little sheet out like I have, and it says this, that, if this, boom, bang. That's it. That's my accountability piece. If my plan is I'm here or scratch or whatever, that's my plan. If it comes back, I'm going to have an emotional state, but over time, what is the better plan versus one trade? Do I trade? Do I change my trade plan because I didn't get here? See? What do I do? The question is not what I do. What do you do? If you don't have the answers, you don't have a trade plan. That's what you need to do this weekend. You got a long weekend. Throw a few shrimps on the barbie and get to work. Because you only get one chance. Unless you have an unlimited bank account and all kinds of time. Don't waste time. Use it. Make progress. Set goals. Don't try to bite off too much at one time. Take it sequentially, step by step. Warning Will Robinson, VPOC migration. Now... This could be trouble. We're still looking for this, but now I am on alert. This means the volume in the potential acceptance is moving against the position. That is suggesting potentially this is too low. Now I have to be very careful here. Not a recommendation. So we're going to watch it. Now I get aggressive. Not a recommendation. Aggressive means to manage the trade. Because this is giving me insight that this might be too low. Retail, right? It still could come down and check, right? Is this really too low? But this is a caution flag. And I would be very quick uh, to maybe change my behavior because of what the auction is telling me, not for any other reason. Not a trade recommendation. This is the auction. Remember, why do these things move around when we were coming down? right? They were moving down. Now it's moving up. You notice a change. Volume and price are moving higher. That is a indication of potential change. And by change, pressure potentially to squeeze. In other words, and now for me, I can't get long, right? Because I'm still in a re mean reversion mode. But the Behavior is changing, so I have to be cautious and maybe flatten out. And it appears, you know, now it can still come here, right? There's stops under here, but the behavior is suggesting something con uh, that's a conflict. So now you need a trade plan. I have it in my trade plan that maybe I should be doing something now. And it says, where is it? Got to look. Val um, oh, hold on. It's been so long since I looked at this thing, i got to find it. Okay. VPOC migration. Counter migration equals potential failure. Moving Market moving away from current value, caution, potential exit. How about that? That's my rules. Okay? It's on my trade plan, my sheet. Now, apparently, I don't have to read it anymore because some of this is in my brain. But, you know, so that. 
uh, movement is the counter-migration, which says potential failure, right? Is it logical? So for me, this is caution, big time, saying that volume, remember, what's this auction market theory and volume profile? Volume. The volume moved from here to here. This is retail. Isn't it saying this is too low at the moment? It can still come back and check. Remember, price check in aisle three. Isn't this too low? at the moment in a higher time frame doesn't that put this on the table now because these guys now are going to be on the hook can you see it can you see why this is like uh where's the where's the the exit in the theater maybe is it logical if you understand the auction it is speaking retail too low pressure squeeze make sense see you guys see you tomorrow thanks for being here thanks for being part of the trader lab if you're interested in uh, some more uh, tools and to join a community of like-minded traders go to bookmap.com join the discord chat you don't have to subscribe to Bookmap or, you know, you won't be solicited. And uh, there's probably some good things in there that might help you out if, if that's your 